Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the T's manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase me immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we'll solve some problems dealing with conversion from fractions to percentage. We are on page number 66 and today is our sixth lesson, day 106. We begin the series six days ago on page number uh, on day 101 where we started solving problems from the sixth edition. If you, if you decide that you want to get some, more, so get some more practice, if you want to work on some extra problems, you will find that we have done the problems, all the problems from the previous edition, the fifth edition, and you will find the solutions to the fifth editions from day one through 80. For example, the concept that we are dealing with right now, we have been dealing, dealing with since day number 101 to 106. The, we have been dealing with the concepts of conversions from percentage to decimals to fractions and back and forth. And you will, you will, find, the, you will find the problems dealing with those concepts on day number 16, 17 and 18. Just type in T's day, day 16 or 17 or 18, it will pop right up. Let's get going. We are going to do 10 problems. I am going to give you the fractions and you are going to convert them into appropriate percentage. Here we go, number 1. Number 1. 1 25th. How do we convert 1 25th into a percentage quickly? Instead of doing the long division, you understand? Well, what, what we need to understand is, what does the word percent mean? What does the word percent mean? They are asking us to convert to percent. What does it mean? Well, percent means exactly what it says. Percent means per 100. Per 100. Percent means out of 100. When somebody talks about 7%, well, 7% simply means 7 out of 100. If we talk about 34%, that's 34 out of 100. 87% is 87 out of 100. That's what the word percent means. It means out of 100. The point here is that if we can somehow convert the bottom into a 100, we'll have the percentage right away because whatever number we see on the top, that's how much percentage we have. How can we convert this 25 into 100? Well, it's very simple. Multiply it by 4. But we can't simply multiply the bottom by 4. If you're going to multiply the bottom by 4, we must do the same thing to the top, otherwise we, will have we, otherwise we will have changed the value of the given fraction. The given fraction is one-fifth, we cannot change its value. So whatever we do to the given fraction, whatever we get to do to the given value, given amount, uh, to the bottom of that fraction, we must treat the top in the same way so that we end up multiplying it by 1. Because you see, if you multiply the bottom by 4, we must multiply the top by 4. And 4 over 4 is 1, we, know we have not changed the value of one-fifth, we are simply multiplying by 4 over 4, which is just 1. But it does serve it does serve a good purpose because now, as you can see, on the top we get four, and the bottom we get twenty-five times four, which is one hundred. Ah, voila! Four out of one hundred. Well, just that's just four percent. That's just four percent. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. And sometimes, sometimes they don't work out as nicely. Sometimes they don't work out so nicely. So your job is to, if you try to figure out in a hurry what this is in percentage, a given fraction, in a hurry. Well, if you cannot figure out the exact percentage, because it takes too long, or is too tedious, or approximate, approximate as much as you can. For example, what would we do with 7 out of 33? 7 out of 33. As you can see, 33 cannot be evenly, uh, 33, uh, 100 is not evenly divisible by 33. 100 was divisible by 25, we could divide 100 by 25, 100 has exactly 425, which is why we multiply by 4. But 100 cannot be divided evenly by 33. So what, what can we do? Well, we cannot get a hundred. Don't cry about it. Don't fuss about it. Just get as close to 100 as you can. That we can do. Simply multiply top and bottom by 3. Simply multiply top and bottom by 3 and what we end up here is on the top we have 7 times 3 which is 21 and on the bottom we have 33 times 9, 33 times 3 which is 99 and that's pretty close to 100, isn't it? No sane person will going to argue with you if you're going to tell them that 99 is approximately 100. Of course it is. So there you go. We have our answer. We don't have the exact answer, but we have a very good approximation. It's approximately 21%. 7 over, 7 over 33, 7 over 33 is approximately 
Let's do one more. You do the next one, okay? Number three. Pause the video and do it yourself. Eight eleventh. Eight eleventh. See what you can do. Again, we cannot divide 100 by 11 evenly, so we're going to try to get as close to 100 as possible. And we can clearly see that if you were to multiply 11 by 9, we'll again get 99 just as before. So multiply top and bottom by 9 over 9. Voila! 8 times 9 is 72, so we end up with 72 over 99, which is approximately 72%. Why? Because 72, 72 over 100 would have been exactly 72%. So 72 over 99 is going to be around around 72 percent. Let's do the next one, number four. Number four is very straightforward. Should we do it? Number four. Three twenty-fifth. Well, three twenty-fifth is very simple, isn't it? Three twenty-fifth is the same idea as one twenty-fifth. Well, that's four percent. If one twenty-fifth is four percent, this guy with twelve percent. Why is that? We're going to do exactly what we did here. We're going to multiply top and bottom by four. And 4 times 3 is 12, 12 over 100, and that's 12%. Which makes perfect sense because if 125th is 4%, then it stands to reason that 20, 325th better be 3 times as much. Let's do next one, shall we? We're going to do 10 of them. The fifth one. Number 5. 16 over 50. Now that's also very easy. We can very easily convert 50 into 100 by multiplying top and bottom by 2. and becomes 32. 32 over 100, which means that 16, 50, 16 out of 50 is exactly 32%. It's not approximately, it's exactly 32%. Let's do the next one. Number 6. 6 over 100. Next one is tricky. Number six, two seventh. What can we do with two seventh? Hundred does not divide evenly by seven, does it? No, it does not. So now we're going to try to get as close to one hundred as possible. Well, how many sevens do we need to get as close to one hundred as possible? I don't know. Let's find out, shall we? I know. I do know. I do know that ten sevens are seventy. Ten sevens are seventy. That I do know. Ten times seven is seventy. So that's ten seven. If you were to add one more 7, well that's 77. But still far off from 100. We want to get as close to 100 as possible. Let's add one more 7. 7, 7 plus 7 is 14. 7, 7, 7 plus 7 is 14. 4, carry 1, and that gives you 8. That's still too far. Let's add another 7. 11, 1. That's still too far. We want to get as close to 100 as possible. We want to get as close to 100 as possible. If you do one more 7, if you do one more 7, aha, that's 98. That's about as close to 100 as we're going to get, because if you're going to add one, if you were to add one more 7, that, would, that will take us to 105. That's too far from 100. Our bullseye is 100. We want to get as close to 100 as possible, either by going just a little bit over it or just a little bit under it. If we were to add one more 7, that would take us to 105. That's too far from 100. Just we have to, you just have to count how many 7s we have. But these were 10 7s. 77 represents 11 7, 12 7. 13.7, oh this must be 14.7, this must be 14.7, which makes perfect sense, 98 must be, must be 14.7, because 98 is made up of, 98 is made up of 70 and 28, 70 is made up of 10 7s, 10 7s are 40, uh, seven, 10 7s are 70, and 28 is made up of 4 7s, 4 7s are 28, it makes perfect sense that this is 14.7, we can clearly see from here, that was 10 7s, 10 7s are 70, 11 7s are 77, 12 7s are 84, 13 7s are 91, and 14 7s must make 98, which is exactly what you're finding here, 98. So let's multiply top and bottom by 14. 14 times 2 is 28, over 98, and now we can claim, now we can claim that 2 7, 2 7 is approximately it's approximately, not exactly because we don't have 100 at the bottom, it's approximately 28%. There we go. Just do one more, shall we? We are at number 6. 
five eight. Where can we do five eight? Five eight. What can we do with the eight? What can we do with eight? Well, five eight. We might be able to understand that five eight is of course same as four eight plus an eight. Four eight. If you reduce it, four eight reduces to half. If you divide top and bottom by four, it's just half. It makes perfect sense. Four out of eight is half, which we know is fifty percent. Which we know is fifty percent. But what about an eight? How much is eight in percentage? Do you know? Let's find out, shall we? How much is eight in terms of percentage? Let's do it on the top. We want to find out how much is eight in terms of percentage. And by the way, you should know these things by heart. You should know your eighths, your quarters, your fifths, your ten. And if you don't know, if you don't know them already, it's about time that you learn them. If you're going to sit for the exam, they come in very handy. Know your eighths. Know your eighths, your quarters, know your tenths, and your fifths. Know your tenths and your fifths. And if you don't know them, watch day number eight. And day number nine. So now I'm giving you five pieces of homework. I would like you to watch day number 16, 17, and 18, where we do the problems dealing with convergence from fractions to decimals to percentage back and forth. And I would also like you to watch day number eight and nine. Type in T's day eight and T's day nine, where we learn our eights, uh, where we learn our eights and the quarters, and day number nine, where we learn our our tenths and the fifths. Let's find out what one eight, shall we? We want to find out what one eight is. We already figured out the four eight. We have to figure out one eight. Well, what we need to understand is that what we need to understand is that an eight is simply half. Is simply an eight is simply. Well, let's start with the quarter. How much is quarter? Do you know? Do you know how much is a quarter? A quarter, of course, everybody knows. A quarter is twenty-five percent. Everybody knows that. A quarter is twenty-five percent. That's not a problem. How do we go from quarter to an eighth? Well, if you were to take half of that, half of that, how much is half of a quarter? One times one is one, and two times four is eight. Half of a quarter is an eighth. And since, and since we took, let, let me start again. This is a quarter is twenty-five percent. And if you were to multiply, if you were to take half of both sides. If you were to take half of both sides, multiply this side by half, and multiply that side by half. Now, I need the room. We're going to erase this thing. We need the room because I'm trying to save this thing and I'm trying to do it in an awkward way. It's, it's, it's unknown. Now we are done. You see, one times one is one, and four times two is eight. In other words, an eight is simply half of a quarter. Did you know that? An eight is simply half of quarter. Did you know that? Of course we knew it. Of course we knew it. You see, here is your pizza. Here is our pizza. If we cut it into four equal slices, each slice represents quarter of a pizza. But what happens if I take a half of a quarter? If you take a half of a quarter, a half of a quarter, well, that's your eight. As you can see, we'll have if we were to take. If you were to cut each quarter into halves, equal halves, we'll have eight slices. We'll end up having eight slices. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, obviously, a quarter is simply a half. A, a, an eighth is simply half of a quarter. If you know what quarter is in terms of percentage, then eight is simply half of that. A quarter is twenty-five percent. A quarter is twenty-five percent. Therefore, an eighth must be Half of twenty-five. Half of twenty-five. How do we figure out half of twenty-five? I know half of twenty-four. Half of twenty-four is twelve. If you divide twenty-four by two, you get twelve. We need half of twenty-five, not twenty-four. It's twelve and a half. It's twelve and a half percent. An eighth 
is 12 and a half percent, which of course when you express that as a decimal, it's going to be point 0.125. But that's what you're going to learn on day number 8 and 9. Learn those things. Do you understand? Let's finish up the problem that we put down, which was 5 8. The student on top now, 5 8. Once we understand that concept, it's very simple. 5 8 is very simple. 5 8 is simply made up of 4 8 and 1 8. 4 8 we know is 50%. 4 8 we know 50% because it's half plus an 8 we just found out is 12 and a half percent. There you go, we, we're done. 5 8 must equal 62 and a half percent. 5 8 must equal 62 and a half percent. Let's carry on, shall we? What number was that one? I forgot now. That was number 7. Let's do number 8. Number 8, oh, number 8 is very simple, very straightforward. Number 8 says, what is 21 25th in terms of percentage? What is 21 25th in terms of percentage? Well, that's very simple. We have 25 at the bottom, we want 100 at the bottom. Let's multiply top and bottom by 4. And if we do that, we'll end up with 21 times 4. I know 20 times 4 is 80. 24s make 80. We don't need 24s, we need 21 4s. We need one more 4, so it's 84. 84 over 100 which is exactly 84%. This is not an approximation, this is the exact value. 21 25th is exactly 84%. That was number 8. Let's do number 9. Number 9 says, what is 1728 in terms of percentage? How do we convert this fraction into percentage? Again, very straightforward problem, because we can divide 100 by 20 very easily. 100 is made up of 520, so if you multiply top and bottom by 5, we'll end up 100 at the bottom, which is exactly what we want. We always want 100 at the bottom, or something as close to 100 as possible, when you're trying to convert a fraction into a decimal, because percent means out of 100. So if you have 100 at the bottom, we are home free. We just have to figure out 17 times 5. Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. Okay, let's find out. I know 10, 10 times 5, this is a 10. You see 17, 17 is made up of 10 plus 7. That's why it's called the 10th digit. This is a 10th digit, this is a unit digit. So I know 10 times 5 is 50. And 7 times 5 is 35. So it's 35 plus 50 over 100, which is same as 85 over 100. So it turns out the 1720th, it turns out the 1720th, 17, 28, turns out it's exactly equal to 85%. Let's do the very last one. The very last problem that we're going to do is the one that you see in the book, which is exercise number, question number 2. Question number 2 on page 66, number 10. Just give me one second. Number 10. Number 10 is asking us how much is 8 fifth? 8 fifth. Well, we can go about it in two different ways. We can do it both ways. We can use the technique of converting the bottom into a 100. That technique would work here. Or we can simply do it out and find out uh, how, many, uh, how to convert the fifths into percentage. Fifths are very easy to convert into percentage, which is why I want you to learn the fifths. Let's do, it, let's do the, the, the method of fifths first, and then we'll do the method of converting the bottom into 100. We'll do it two, method, two different methods, okay? Or if you like, we can do the bottom pa, the method of uh, converting the bottom into 100 first. 100 divided by 5 is how much? 100 divided by 5 is 20. In other words, 20 times 5 is 100. Of course, everybody knows that 20 nickels make $1. Because each nickel is 5 cents. 20 nickels make a dollar. In other words, 20 times 5 is 100, so if you want to multiply top and bottom by 20, we'll end up with 100 at the bottom. We'll end up with 100 at the bottom. Now we, all we have to do is figure out the top. 80 times 20 is 160. 8, 8, 2 is a 16. 8 times 2 is 16, but we don't have 2, we have 20, so it's 160. Well, there you go. 160 over 100, that's exactly 160 percent exactly 160 percent on the way could have we could have done the same problem is this way watch here what happens we have eight fifths don't we can we write our eight fifths as five fifths plus a three fifths sure why not 
And how much is five fifth? Five fifth, five out of five is one. And if you have a whole of something, that's a hundred percent. Five fifths is hundred percent, obviously, because it's the whole thing. It's hundred percent. Let's take care of that part. Now we have to figure out our three fifths. Do you know your fifths? Now, if you don't know your fifths, if you don't know your fifth, then I hope that you know your tenths. Hopefully you will know your tenths because most people do know their tenths. Convert the fifth into a tenth, if it helps. If it helps, you convert the bottom into a tenth. Take this thing and multiply top and bottom by two. And if you do that, now the second part, now the second part, since, since we are doing the, since we are still doing the percentage, since we are still doing the fraction, let's put this in the fr in, in fr fr fraction form as well. So this is the five fifth. And this is 3 times 2, which is 6, and 5 times 2, which is 10. And do you know how much is 6 tenth? Well, 6 tenth is 0.6, isn't it? Which is same as 60%. 6 tenth is 60%. That's it, we're done. 5 fifth is 100%, and 6 tenth is 60%. 60 plus 100 is 160%, which is exactly what we found. So one more time, there are two methods. We can convert the bottom five, denominator into a 100 by multiplying it by 20. 5 times 20 is 100. And if, since we are multiplying the bottom by 20, we must multiply the top by 20. 8 times 20 is 160. 160 out of 100, that's 160 percent. Or, or, we could have done this method, which is break up our 8 fifths into a 5 fifth and a 3 fifths. And how do you convert 3 fifths into a percentage? It's very easy. You take your 3 fifths, and if you don't know your fifths by heart, multiply top and bottom by 2 which gives you 6 over 10, which is 60%. So 3 fifths is 60% and 5 fifths is 100%, hence giving us 160%, which is exactly what we had before. The very last thing we will do in this video is the, ver the only problem that we have not done on this page, which is problem number 3. Even though problem number 3 does not ask us to convert a fraction into a percentage, it's asking us to convert percentage to fraction, but we're going to do it out right now, so it's all out of the way. Number three, question number three, we are still on page number 66, very last problem. Question number three. Question number three says, number three, says 83.1 percent is equivalent to what fraction? Let's find out, shall we? Well, we know what percent means. Percent means, percent means out of 100, we talked about it before. So 83, 83.1 percent must mean, must mean 83.1 over 100 which makes perfect sense if you think about it because when we talk about when we talk about 50 percent 50 percent means 50 out of 100 and 50 out of 100 is half everybody knows that half equals 50 percent similarly we know that 25 percent 25 percent we know is, is, is a quarter a quarter of something is 25 percent so 25 percent must mean 25 out of 100 and if we divide top and bottom by 25, 25 goes away, becomes a 1. And if we divide 100 by 25, we get a 4, which is 1 quarter. So we know that we have to, when we have to convert a percentage to a fraction, we simply have to take our percentage and divide by 100, because that's what percentage means. Percent means out of 100. So if somebody says 4%, that means in terms of fraction, it means 4 out of 4 divided by 100. 37% expressed as a fraction is simply 37 one over 100 and so on and so forth. Here we have 83.1, so we get 83.1 over 100. But we can't leave it like this, we need to have the, the top number has to be a whole number, we can't leave it in, in, the, in the decimal form. What can we do to the top to convert into a whole number? Oh, very simple. If you simply were to multiply 83.1 by 10, if you were to multiply 83.1 by 10, we'll end up with 831. Since we are multiplying the top by 10, since we are multiplying top by 10, we must multiply the bottom by 10. And if you were to do that, it turns out that 83.1% when expressed as, per, as, as a fraction is exactly 83.1 times 10 is 831. 
831 and in the bottom 100 times 10 is 100 oh sorry 1000 100 times 10 is 1000 which gives you 83.1% voila it turns out it's 83.1% where is my cap 83.1% is exactly Eight hundred and thirty-one over one thousand. That is the end of the topic dealing with. It was the very first page. And they condensed all those, those concepts in one simple tiny part on the page, as if it is trivial. It is not trivial. It is one of the most important, most fundamental concepts on the exam. Knowing how to convert your fractions into percentage and into into decimals and back and forth, which is why we spent so much time on it. We we made six videos on it. That's the end of the topic. Tomorrow, on day number 107, we'll start a new topic, which will deal with the, the which will deal with what you see on the next page, on page number 87, which is the concept of proper order of operations. When you have several different operations that are given to you in a given expression, in what order must one go? There is there are, there, there are certain rules that one must follow so that everybody knows what you are doing there so that everybody can follow your work and there are some conventions, there are some traditions, there are some rules that we must follow and those rules of uh, operations are called order of operations which is usually referred to as PEMDAS by the acronym of the mnemonic that uh, most people use. We'll talk about all of that tomorrow, okay? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.